you know, up until this point, the technology that DJs use, the mixer, all that stuff, but primarily mixer, like remember I showed you that when in our DJ uh, unit was, you know, you had these companies that, you know, made mixers and DJs sort of made do with what they had. Now, the reason why the invisible scratch pickles are so important was in, in the Beat Junkies was that they were the first to, not the first, but the first to have a real impact with collaborating with this Japanese company called Vestex. And so, uh, you know, uh, uh, Shortcut drew a design for a mixer on a napkin, showed it to a, a rep, um, you know, at this company called Newmark. They kind of scoffed at him. Then he showed it to the people at Vestex. He was, he was with DJ Repmatic. And, um, you know, it was the first time where they started to do, you know, research and development with, with DJs. And they came out with this mixer, the Vestex 05 Pro. It came out in, you know, 95. And they came out with 50, 50 of them, this gray, this gray version. Um, and it was basically, you know, a DJ designed layout. And it was intended for the scratch DJs. They, they um, put out 50 of these. I think they sold for $500, which at the time was astronomical for a DJ mixer, which now, you know, the stuff like this would cost you a couple grand. Um, and Vestex didn't think any would sell and sold out like that. Um, and then they sold maybe probably three or 400,000 of the, the gold version, which was, you know, so it cha th this changed the art because um, this mixer had a nice crossfader on it. Um, before this, you know, a lot of the mixers didn't have really good crossfaders on it. They had really awkward placing of stuff. Um, mixers were long, you know, made for more disco mixing, and or the crossfader wasn't in the middle. Um, so they came up with this design, you know, d you know, scratch DJ sort of focused piece. And um, you can check out my book, which I got a link to, where I write about the full history of this and a bunch of other stuff. There's a free Creative Commons version of the book if you really, <laughs> if you're really interested in, in that shit. Um, you know, where I interview all these cats and, and write about that. Uh, I got three of these gray O fives out of the fifty that they made down downstairs because I collect like like that. Um, but. This relationship that they founded, you know, this this changed the game. This this mixer changed the game because all these DJs had these ideas in their head that the tech the technology couldn't do. So they would retrofit the technology. They they mess with the technology, you know, uh, to make it do what they wanted to do. And finally, a product came out that allowed them to make some of their ideas they have in their heads manifest. And you know, with this came this whole boom in new scratch DJs, people who, who kind of came on. And the interesting thing is not only did Vestex, um, in sh based out of Shibuya, uh, uh, Japan, you know, use them in design and product development. They also used, you know, uh, the scratch pickles um, to brand and sell products. And they collaborated on a bunch of projects after that. I mean, they had probably like a 10 year run and relationship and um, but they were because they were these huge icons in the culture. They could also brand and sell the the products. Their endorsement made made a lot. So they became one of the real, you know, first prominent um, DJs to not only help in the design of a product, um, but um, you know, market and push that product to the culture. The actual first was his name was DJ Tricks from the UK who designed uh, a mixer for. Vestex that actually bore his name on it. It was the first signature uh, DJ DJ mixer, but it didn't go on to have the impact that the um, that the um, um, O5 Pro would. And we'll cut to a little video here where you uh, have Qbert and Yoga Frog actually talking a little bit about the mixer and the development because I think I think that's important. So um, we'll, we'll check that out and then and then we'll talk a little bit more uh, about this. But I just really want to stress that you know you can kind of see like. Um, these young Filipino Americans just had just such a, in, a crazy, you know, cultural impact, industrial in, impact, technological impact that that the blueprint that they helped establish is still, you know, still there today. It's still ringing true today. And um, they really, really became these incredible role models uh, for young Filipino Americans um, and Asian Americans and Asians. Um, all around the world, all around the United States, and, and, and gave them a face, um, a prominent face, a prominent representation, representation in, in hip hop um, music and culture. Oh, 
05 Pro What year? Wow, that's a good question. 1993, 94? Back then? Yeah, oh, because they were trying to do like a simple mixer uh, so we could juggle better. I think there was like the, the DMC mixer had, had one like that. It was real simple. I think the very first simple mixer was the, uh, what is that? The Gemini 2200, I believe. We'll talk about that in a second. But this right here, this exact mixer was the first mixer to ever have a reverse switch, enhancer switch, because um, a lot of DJs out in uh, the West Coast, we would scratch with the clickers, which were on Fama Newmarks, so it's kind of like up and down thing. And then, um, so going that same motion, scratching, we needed the fader to be in reverse, so that we can get that like real quick um, cutoff. And so this was the first one. We took it to uh, Vallejo, where there was a Vestax uh, station. Um, who was that? Is that Toshi? Matt, yeah, and Dash. Both, both of them would be there, and they hooked me up with the reverse, which me and Shortcut went there. And this is a Shortcut helped design this mixer as well to make it real simple. And then later on, we moved these kind of up a little higher. The, the headphone ball, because when you juggle, you would hit your hand on them. Like, ah! So then we need to put a fader on this. And uh, so after that, after this mixer came out, I think before this was like a, what the other Gemini mixer too. Well, I was kind of like trying to make it simple. And that other PMC uh, DMC mixer, what was that called? The Melos, yeah, that was nice. Even before the Melos, it was a version for the DMC battle competition. We had, uh, like just this and the fader. Hey. What was the what was the shelf price for this when it first came out? Oh, I thought it was outrageous. It was what it was three hundred or two hundred or five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks. First five hundred. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's crazy. Before that, every all the mixers were at two hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, to have a, a simple mixer was two hundred bucks, but they always broke down. Mm -hmm. This was the first one that was like heavy duty. You know, but for five hundred bucks, they were like, nah, how are we gonna make how many? So, yeah, fifty. Fifty. That was the, this was slated to just become like the rest of the other. Things. Yeah, limited. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't in the bigger market, but it did catch on, I guess. Huh. And then all mixers turned into this style. Battle. This was the new battle blueprint. That's right. That's yeah, right. With, uh... And then they ended up selling how many of these in the long run? Four or five pros. Four or five, yeah. Wow. Well, over ten thousand. No, it's not more. Like, more like hundred thousand? No, like three hundred, four hundred thousand. Yeah. Damn. So where's the money? Can't even get a new fader? Damn, that's next. 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 Damn, also, Eddie Death and DJ Quest and Mars and Disc, they're all from Book Group Scratch Hamsters. Uh, they all scratch and reverse. All of us scratch and reverse out here in, in uh, the Bay Area for some weird reason. And so, since they had a crew called the Book Group Scratch Hamsters, they would they call their style hamster style because not only did they scratch and reverse, but they juggled 